Okay, my microphone wasn't working, um, but all Alaw said he wanted to talk to me, so I just decided to talk to him. Um, he uh, thanked me again for not giving up his little lie to the people that he was with when I found him. I didn't enjoy deceiving them, but it seemed simpler than the alternative. And <laughs> apparently Zodi doesn't like Skullduggery. Um, simpler than explaining your involvement with the leaden key? Absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just, Indeed. if you say so. I take no pleasure in duplicity. Uh, what exactly were you doing out here? Er, remind me, how did we leave one another? Ah, the steward told me about your incident at Cadnua. He cocks his head and gives you a searching look. Aethys took a piece of your soul. I suppose it's only natural to lose a few memories along with it. You and I met in Gilded Vale. Shortly after your arrival in Deerwood and in the midst of my... run-in with the locals. He gives you a tight, uncomfortable smile. I was with you as you sought Theos and answers regarding your awakening. He clasps his hand and takes a deep breath. And you helped me come to terms with mine. Thanks to you, I learned to assert myself over Isilmir. She hasn't troubled me since. A past iteration of a lost soul. It's a brash, high-speaking elven woman who lived in Adir long ago. She awakened an Aelos soul after his father attacked him and frequently got him into trouble with her cheeky comments and aggressive behavior. Interesting. I'm glad you're doing Welcome better. To our journey across the Deerwood. <clears throat> we pursued Theos and discovered the leaden key at the center of Widewind's legacy. He frowns, and a deep crease appears between his eyebrows. And, more importantly... A millennia-old conspiracy to conceal the true origins of the gods. Man, I need to play the first game. I'm only like 10 hours into it. This all sounds very cool, and this would have been more interesting. Um, they asked, uh, an impressive bit of trickery on the part of the Anguin Anguithans. He gives you a sidelong glance, there's an uncomfortable pause before he speaks again. Stefan strokes his braided beard beneath his quiet smirk, Zodi's eyes narrow, dark lashes fusing. Idir uh, glowers nearby. pro leaden key? At your suggestion, I took up Theos's mantle after we parted company. Idir makes a grunt of displeasure. I wanted to use the leaden key to improve the lives of Kith. So for five years, I've been tracking down leaden key circles, searching for the places where they operate in secret. He knits his brows, Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. Hoping they can be reformed. Maybe start with something small, like overhauling those masks. <laughs> the Theos had many lifetimes in which to build up the leaden key. I'm beginning to appreciate that advantage. He pauses, the mirth draining from his face. The task has been more difficult than I anticipated. I don't think I fully understood the weight of the decisions I would have to make. Or the burden of living with them. It was much easier when I only had to follow someone else's lead. My father's, Theos's, yours. He glances at you out of the corner of his eye. Easy, sure. I led you right into a pr uh, prison of the gods. What matters is that you got us out again. He laces his fingers together, a familiar look of anxiety working its way over his face. After we defeated Theos, I thought the hard part of changing the leaden key would be tracking down its members and operations. But... Perhaps this would be easier with an example. I went to a village in Old Valia, a run-down backwater of a place... Uh, centuries ago, the Leaden Key had intervened to end some heretical cult. The details were lost, but what had endured was a practice of ritual bloodletting. A gruesome, pointless tradition. You got an eye for charming little towns, I'll say that much. At every full moon, the villagers would feed the soil with their blood. No one 
Young or old, sick or hale was exempt. Ew. What did you do? I thought new leadership might guide them away from this practice. So I adjusted some of the deeds pertaining to the ownership of their land. He gives you a sly look. Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. Zodi flicks her sickle back and forth, agitated. It just so happened that a nearby Comtessa, a rather prosperous one, had a claim on the village and the fertile fields around it. That seems like one of Theos's dirty tricks. I'd expect you to act with more honor. I did it for the right reasons. Not that this changed much. The Comtessa annexed the village, as I'd planned. But she did nothing about the bloodletting ritual. And while it continued, she taxed the villagers to pay for the plantation she was building. And conscripted half of them to defend it. He's worked the edge of his sash into a tight knot. He clenches it between pale, rigid fingers. Um, and now you feel responsible, is that it? I had to do something, didn't I? He turns to you with wide, anguished eyes. He pauses again, untwisting the sash in his, at his lap. I keep wondering what I might have done differently, or how I could have known better. I don't have an answer for that. Then at least I'm in good company. He gazes at the horizon, seeming to gather his thoughts. Thank you. It's a relief to share this burden. You've given me a lot to think about. Wait, you still haven't told me what the Animancers have to do with any of this. Ah, that. I'm looking for an old leaden key sect. I've found several references, but... He breaks off, shaking his head. I want to be sure. Uh, please, let me go over my notes again. Then I promise I'll tell you everything. Uh, I need more insight to talk to this motherfucker. We'll talk more later then. Yeah. All right, let's get moving, fellas. Um, let's check the journal. Uh, reach Kanga Palace in the Serpent's Crown District. All right. Back alley. I'm sure there's going to be some ne'er-do-wells in there. Sick my attack bear on them. No? Maybe not this time of day. Oh, she's got a name. Well met, stranger. If you feel like investing in protection, I'd be willing to trade iron for copper. Your armor presents you with a friendly smile. Um, let me see Lots what you have. See. Take your time. All kinds of shit. Mostly basic, though. I could use a large shield for him, though. Once I know more about this game, I might want to retrain these people. Broken bottles litter the cobblestones of this narrow street. The air is thick with reek of dog scat. Gross. Sure. Postinago of a brother. You there, have you seen Laro Badato? Mm, sounds like a side quest. Madico, where is that spoiled brat? A woman in fine clothes clutches her ledger in both hands. She searches the faces of passerby, settling on yours with an uncertain frown. 
Are you all right? I'm trying to be the responsible one in the family, and it's a heavy burden. Laro is past due for a company meeting. Mother wants me to drag the elusive louse back by his ear. She tucks the book under her arm. It must be nice to be a layabout. Uncle Angbert would have tanned my hide. The faint trace of a smile forms on Nadir's lips. Fuck. I am angry and jealous in equal measure. You'd think this district was a maze, the way he manages to hide. She glances over her, your shoulder and sighs, then looks back at you with sudden recognition. The spirit magnet. Sientere, that I did not recognize you. If you desire to get in the graces of the Valian Trading Company, we can help each other. Uh, how can I help? Could I persuade you to watch out for Laro? I'd pay generously for your travel. Study her hands. Hera has been digging her nails into her ledger, leaving crescent moon shape impressions on the binding. She notices your interest and holds the book protectively close. I'm, I'm concerned because Laro tends to feud with Orso, one of the local Valera rats. Take it your mother is someone important. It's Sally Bardato. The Valian Trading Company leans on her to finance their mission. If only more of her offspring were as accomplished. Nara raises her free hand and squeezes the bridge of her nose. As long as the Valian, Valian Trading, Company, Trading Company recognizes my usefulness, we can call it a deal. Up. Consider it done. She flips open the ledger and hastily scribbles in a column, licking the nib of her quill. There. She snaps the book shut. Laro and his miscreant friends carouse at the tavern, the falls above the Adra Mill, and the southwestern bridge. If you see him, tell Laro to get his good-for-nothing ass back home. Well, we do have this thing with chasing a rogue god to the ends of Aora, but I guess if it's on the way... Don't be a smart assy dear. All right. There's a mill. We'll check the tavern. Kneel before him and wonder at his benevolence. Oh, shut up. Feel the warmth of his rage. He has a nui is at the palace, blaming the Valians for attacking one of their ports. Well, did they? Of course not. But the Queen must calm them down before they go to war over it. Well met, stranger. Akira, but isn't this district a fine place? The Juana woman stares off in the distance with a longing expression. And this makes you sad. I am not one meant to venture far from the gullet. Until recently, I... I had a respectable job at the Luminous Bathhouse. Now that I am unemployed, I seek to make myself useful before the money runs out. And I must return to the Roparu as a pauper. She frowns and turns her gaze back up to you. Could you direct me to the Kahanga Palace? Yeah. You want to follow the road north, up the mountain, always climbing. It is the highest point in the city. You worked at the Luminous Bathhouse? A wonderful place. Would that I could cross its threshold again and feel the mist of luminous waters. Her smile is sad, if genuine. In spite of my time there, I cannot do else but give it my highest recommendation. You will find the luminous bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. Tell me more about the Queen's birth. The Queen granted this area of the city to the Valian outsiders. Here they organize their business and trade. Digging up the archipelago with both hands and carrying riches overseas. She glances toward the docks. In her welcoming embrace, the Queen allowed a similar concession to the Royal Deadfire Company. You would do well to see as much of Nekataka while you are here, I am thinking. How did you lose your job at the bathhouse? More happens at the bathhouse than cleanliness and ease. It is a place of meetings, business, and transactions. To all of which, the attendants are either blind or deaf. One day, I overheard more than I ought to have. In my airing, I gasped. To my great shame, I showed a most unprofessional reaction before clients. 
I was fired. And rightly so. She bows her head. What did you overhear in the bathhouse to cause such a scandal? Kima shakes her head and lowers it in the deepest shame. She's trembling. It's clear that, in her estimate, she has suffered enough without debasing herself even further. Alright. Uh, so on my way down here. Merla, how is every ship hunter taken? Someone that needs hiring? No sooner you approach the Valayan woman, then she squints and turns up her nose regarding you with thinly veiled distaste. I only deal with serious clients. Now shoo. She makes a sweeping gesture with both hands. I mean, I am a serious client. I can see this from here. Madiko. But it is impossible to find skilled work when every competent freelancer wastes their shore leave in the wild mare. She grimaces towards the east. When blood travels south of their brains, the value of a good bounty is forgotten. You give out bounties? I could take some work off uh, take some off your hands. You, a nameless face of the streets? She thumbs her chin and gives you a thorough looking over. I do not make a habit of shepherding new talent, but ach, there is a seed of potential. She sighs to herself and peers over your shoulder before giving up and addressing you directly. We will cut your teeth on Biakara, a Huana sailor and would-be patriot who plagues company ships. I'll take the bounty. Biakara sails her voyager's scale of Tangaloa off of Hasongo's northeastern coast. Aina studies you once more before shrugging and seeing you off with a wave. Before I go, I had some questions. Ask your questions, Aimika. Why aren't there more sailors accepting work? Uh, but I blame Luminous Adra. Uh, she folds her arms and exhales sharply through her nose. Our privateers are busy escorting shipments out of the dead fire. Everyone is rich. No one is hungry. Where are the casitas willing to sink their enemies for a bag of pies, huh? Drunk on success. She waves derivis deris derisively <laughs> toward the east. Alright, that's fine. This guy looks stoned or something. He's fucking dancing. I don't have a voice for shanties these days. Too much... Get our ship fixed up. Do you enjoy Hail and welcome to the wild mare, friend. A jovial man at the bar grins and motions you closer. <coughs> His arms are corded with thick muscle and cross-hatched with scars. Now, what can I do for you? Looking for more into... No, I'm not. Um, show me what you have for sale. Anything you like? Backstage storage. Um, private dance room. Cast with level one spells, plus one to all skills. Interesting. Mm, no weapons or armor. He's got lots of food, though. Alright, screw it. Where in the blazes is that old man? Uh, what do you got? A young woman lingers near a stage with a um, mug of ale clutched tight in her hands. Though she shows no interest in the dancers, the bags beneath her eyes speak to many long nights spent drinking in the tavern. She looks lazily about the room until her gaze alights you with interest. Have you seen an old elf hanging around here lately? Dress is funny. Probably drunker than an eel in a barrel of mead. Uh, why do you care? Your old goose punter owes me a fair bit of coin. She takes a deep drink from her mug and concludes it with a tremendous belch. Gross. Uh, how much are we talking about? 
She leans in close and whispers conspiratorially <laughs> in your ear. Five thousand coppers, if you'd believe it. And if Hello. you give me my money back, I'll give you a twenty percent share as thanks. Um, twenty percent, but fine. I'd be doing all the work. Fine, Andra's great sagging tits. Fine. <laughs> You can have forty percent and rights to whatever baubles Oswald has on him. Nice. Now we're talking. Who the fuck are you? No, you're a dock worker. Yep, she's a little busy. Dancing sexily. Oh look at this guy. Is his dick hanging out? Oh no, that is his belt. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Oh, that's hilarious. Captain? You say I cannot down the rest? Watch me, I'm Miko. A Valayan sailor raises her tankard and uh, arches her back to invite a torrent of ale down her expectant mouth. Holding this pose with nothing to show for it, she taps the tankard base and furrows her brow at its apparent emptiness. Her companion shakes his head and focuses his attention elsewhere. Medico, it is no wonder I thirst. As she wipes her mouth with the back of her hand, her eyes widen to meet yours. Why do you stare? Your next I grog is on me. Even in the oasis, I am parched. She pockets the coins and glances uh, past you at the bar. I lost if twelve copper. Wishes, there is a vacancy on my ship. Redora's frown cracks to reveal a sli shy smile. Well, another reminder that not every seaworthy vessel will be crewed up to the standards of the sorcerer. He shakes his head. Uh, the living lands, and I'm at. As a captain of the Defiant, I'm already taken. Sintere, sere. Alright. Next time around the wheel, perhaps. You don't seem to be having much fun as the rest of the clientele. Uh, the fun ran dry with the coin. She manages a wan smile. When the dancers see more than an empty purse, I will be a content Radora. She sighs up at the stage. Oh, alright. Let's check out the upper floor. Let's look for this guy. Get some money, man. And go beat his ass. Hick. Even the food's good. Awesome. A named dancer. Something you like. The dancer turns to greet you, a coy smile tugging at his lips. He's short for an elf, but no less grateful for his lacking height. His long face and dark eyes lend him a solemn air. Uh, but any hint of gloom is chased away by the wash of color in his cheeks. Alof. This is the last place I expected to see you. Have your interests changed so much since our time at Bragon Hill? A grin lights up Ymir's face. He fidgets with his hair self-consciously, smoothing it down where it's been must. Mm, no, I still enjoy tile puzzles and deflecting personal questions. Anyway, what are you doing here? He looks away <laughs> as though he's trying to ignore Ymir's eager gaze. I could ask the same of you. He laughs lightly, a hand over his I mouth. I make my own hours, meet fascinating people. And the coin's nothing to sneer at. Better than stuffy old books and unflattering robes. He casts a critical eye over Alaw Southfit. He opens his mouth to speak, but decides better of it. This it's is amazing. Good to see you again, Alaw. Anyway, I should get back to it. Be well. He smiles warmly at Aloth, blush covering the tips of his ears. Ha ha, everyone's I laughing. Really seeing you. He catches himself, looking panicked. Perhaps lovely is too strong a word. I meant pleasant. Perfectly agreeable. He looks at you, chagrined. I can see where I may have confused the poor fellow in our academy days. Did you enjoy the show? There's more to see, if you're interested. I suppose. He looks at you with a newly critical eye. I was raised in the Adir Empire. When I was young, I studied to be an arcane knight. After an incident at my school i left the continent and wandered until i found myself in nikataka as you can see i stayed 
How'd you become, uh, what kind a of incident? A handful of my fellow students got up to a bit of mischief that ended with several people dead. His gaze lingers on the floor, the cushions, the tables, anywhere but your face. After a moment, he shrugs, offering no further explanation. Um... Oh, never mind. Ahoy, Captain. Uh, if I could bend your ear a moment, uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. A furred hand at his belly and one heel out. He bows deeply, drooping ear almost touching the ground. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person, neither. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. Uh, you're welcome. Have, uh, gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnage would have snatched it had I not found a perfect hiding spot. Uh, where'd you hide I don't it? Know, were I to tell you that, you mightn't want it no more. Uh oh. Seraphin gives an innocent whistle while scratching his ass subtly as one could scratch it. <laughs> Just a jest, Cap. Nay, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids back then, so my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid. I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. Okay. <laughs> Why did Malnaz treat you so badly? I don't really know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together, I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. He chuckles quietly. Were you attracted to Malnaz? Didn't fancy her in the least, but a man has needs. I figured at the time that she were as wet as any other lass. Hello. Figured I'd give her a whisper about what we might get down to in the old. Her answer were an unequivocal no made with a uh, sharpness. Might have been the closest I've ever been to death. He winces and rubs his throat. Thank you for the gift, Seraphim. You'll be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. Seraphin salutes, grinning broadly, and turns away. Cipher Shackle. Plus one constitution. Resistance to dexterity afflictions. Interesting. It's better than what I got. Oh, it's nothing. So this gives me plus one perception. Um, this gives me constitution. You can wear it, buddy. Resistance to perception inflictions. All right, that's fine. Wear your hats, my brother. Gauntlets of accuracy. I could probably wear those. Indeed, I can. Uh, 15 max health. Let's give that. Oh, well, what do you have? Religion and stealth. No. That's probably better for me, actually. Hmm. She is my perceptive one. What about this guy? Stealth. Actually, I think he's stealthy. And what does this do again? Constitution. She could probably use that. But there, look what the watcher's given me. It's pretty as a picture, ain't it? Oh my. That's cool. You look at this. Ooh, hidden shit. Who on a charm belt? I, of course. No, no, no. Well, this is probably a good spot to end the video anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.